Hello, Robert. Wow. <laughs> How's it going? I'm chilling. <laughs> uh, what was going on in the gym today? Uh, Even though I was there. Not much, man. They just had uh, the guys did the drills. Earlier today, we had strength and conditioning. Um, regular day at work. Who you got on tap? They got fights coming up. On the 23rd at the Fillmore, we got John Carlos, Avery, and Tamir. Oh shit, three three dudes? Yeah. So you are does that make it easy for you when three guys nah. got one day? <laughs> nah, because you can't train everybody the same. But for the days that we do sprints, everybody's together. Like, um, I don't wanna I don't want you to, to give up your secrets. But just give me a, a, a insight to planning and preparing a camp. Alright, so you got three guys. Mm -hmm. I would imagine uh, they all have different rounds. Avery is a little bit more further along in his career. Yeah, eight eight rounder. Eight rounder. Mm -hmm. So like different physiques, yeah. different physiologies. Yeah. Like like go like give me give me some insight into what is Rob Acosta how does he play out of camp? So once I get the call, uh, we find out if it's a four round, six round, eight round, 10, 12. And then um, see the second question will be is where the weight is. So now we have to see where the weight is at, how much we gotta lose, how much time. Um, and are they the type of fighter that stood active? So if they took the break and they're not as busy, or they fight and then they take off for like a few weeks and then come back and you know that all plays a major factor because then you know the fighter is actually harming harming himself more by fighting and then go ahead taking a two weeks off pigging out doing everything he had to do and then coming back and then now he's bloated so it's kind of like you fluctuating with the weight a little too much and then it gets to a point the older you get the harder it is to remove hmm. so um, it does get a little bit challenging um, at times but, you know, it comes with the territory. You know, I'm responsible for their weight, I'm responsible for their conditioning, I'm responsible for it all. So I gotta, gotta make sure that everything is uh, dotted and crossed. Now, when you're watching the fights intently, are you paying attention to, you know, how they're moving, how they're breathing? What fight exactly? Just when you're watching your fighters fight. The day of the fight? The day of the fight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I pay attention to everything. Now, uh, how they breathe in, their breathing patterns. Um, their hand movements, their body language, I'm paying attention to everything. Now, does their performance, um, do you tweak it the next fight based off of what you saw in that fight? Maybe. I do tweak it, yeah, but I also tweak it just, just because. So, you know, it's a case by case basis. So like, say for an example, this one fight, you know, it, 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 our, one of our guys is fighting a boxer or a puncher, and we came into the game plan a little different. And for the next camp, he, the guy's fighting a boxer. So I come into that game plan different. A lot of things stays the same, but a lot of things also I, I I adjust and then go from there. But I do tweak it from camp to camp. All right, so let's say you got a guy, eight rounder. Mm -hmm. He get in, he's throwing a lot of punches and he seemed to be winded at three and four rounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that before. All right. None of my guys, but I've seen Yeah, that. but all right, so in your mind, okay, what do you have to do now, next camp? Uh, it's 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 all about the we make we make some adjustments so that way his endurance can last longer, so that way his lungs can intake more oxygen and he can have the the energy to to consume his energy as he's boxing. So if he's gassing out in three rounds and we're talking about an eight round fight, you know that's where my job um, gets criticized the most at that point because that is my job. You know what I mean? People, I, I need you to understand that you, you notice he kind of deflected the question slightly because he didn't want to give up his tricks. <laughs> You're a sneaky I, dude, uh, Rob. People. I, I, just, I just, I make my adjustments. So for the following camp, I'll make sure that that doesn't happen again. I only make one mistake. Okay. So if there's a mistake that, I, that I've done, right. I'll own the mistake, but right. I'll never repeat that same mistake. Last question on that particular topic. Huh? Let's say a guy um, suffers from like tendonitis, bad joints, All right. but wants to increase endurance. How do you right, switch right. it up? Yeah. I don't. Um, all right. So your question is basically like if a person has suffers from runner's knee, yeah, runner's knee, knee, jumper's knee. Okay, how can they still get boxing endurance w without putting in miles? Um, 
That's actually a really good question. So there's a lot of other ways that you can build the endurance depending on what the circumstances are. You could do a lot of hit training. You could do a lot of uh, pool work, being in the swimming pool. You can do things on a bike. You could do things on elliptical. Um, it all depends how severe the injury is to whatever joints we're, we're talking about that that's, you know, that's in play. So if his elbow hurts because it's a hyperextension, you know, we gotta make some adjustments as the camp goes, or we just gotta make some adjustments as 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 it proceeds that specific session. You know, a, a coach will have to diagnose certain things and say, okay, there's having he's having trouble with certain things because he has an injury, and then so on and so forth. That's a, a good segue. You being a strength and conditioner coach, when a fighter is dealing with injuries, yeah. Yeah. Is is that the more the like the most trying task of doing a camp? Well, here's the thing, right? So I, I see a lot of guys, a lot, a lot of coaches, they'll kind of downplay strength and conditioning, or they'll say that fighters don't need it, or anything like that. Like that's an old school mentality, because in reality, um, coaches, boxing coaches specifically, work on what they're what they're supposed to do, which is boxing training. They don't really have much knowledge. In, in the whole fitness industry. I don't give a fuck if you even got a small a certification. It's not gonna do you any justice. You know what I mean? If you get a small certification, cool, but how are you gonna apply that when your boxer is doing a push-up and it shows that he's lack power on one side? How do you how do you how do you even out the imbalances? How do you what what is it that you're gonna provide that it's gonna keep the core tight at all times? What, it, what are certain things that you can't do? So when people think about strength and conditioning, right? They think about just strength and they think about weight loss. They, they, don't, they don't put together everything else. If the sport is 80% mental, that's also part of conditioning. You're conditioning your mind to take specific uh, punishment, to go through specific tasks and everything else. So strength and conditioning is just an overall thing. It's just downplayed by people that are stuck in the fucking old school. You know what I mean? But there's nothing that I could do about that. That's it's just the, the times change, technology change, study has changed. So you know, if you look at everybody that's reached a high top tier, they all got strength coaches, all of them. You know what I mean? All of them maybe even get treated different. You got certain coaches that go out there and they they they're with their fighter from beginning all the way to the end. You know what I mean? And then you got other guys that can't work with their fighter on the day of the fight, so they're working with other guys, and that's acceptable too. But you know, you gotta know how to execute specific tasks when it comes to your fighters. Just because, you know, a person has strength and conditioning background doesn't necessarily mean that they can fix specific imbalances of the body. Okay.